This is Rob Tubbett for Boxing Social in association with Pursue Fitness. Joined here today for the first time by Grant Smith. We're at the Steel City Gym here in Sheffield. How you doing, Grant? Brilliant, Rob. Thank you for coming. You're very welcome, very welcome. Thanks for being so accommodating, having me down to the gym today. Um, how's things in preparation for, well, your next, your next fighter out is Charlie Edwards, your world champion. How are things going? Uh, prep, prep's gone brilliant for all this, as everybody normally says it does, but... <laughs> Anybody who's seen sparring, he's had some good sparring partners in for this, again, as we always do. We always try to make it really hard, realistic in sparring, uh, and everything's game plan set, he understands the game plan, trying to get his sparring partners put in certain situations, and he's had really good sparring for this. They're all pushing him, and everything's coming through good, and he's looking good. How long have you been working with Charlie now? Uh, me and Charlie's been together about 14 months. Yeah, about 14, 15 months. How is he different now, apart from having a shiny green and gold belt around his waist? How is he different now compared to the Charlie Edwards that first came to you 14 months ago? Uh, Charlie's he's, he's maturing now. He's settling down. He's, he's fitting in to the team and all the other lads very well. Obviously, we've got some mo mo new lads as well, and they've all fitted in well. But he's fitting really well. His boxing's coming down. He's slowing down. He seems to be maturing. And uh, whatever we tell him to do, he's just doing it, then he understands why it's happening and why we're doing things and then when he's seeing it coming off in sparring, in training and he can see himself that it's working and he's just maturing and getting stronger, better in all departments. Talk to me about the initial decision for Charlie to come here, obviously you've had, you've had Sonny um, in the gym, Sonny, his brother, for people who for some reason who may not know that um, for a long time, was it, was it something that had been spoken about before or was it something that kind of happened on the fly as it were? Uh, <clears throat> it, it were a bit on fly, but before that, obviously I've trained Sonny for like five, six years. <clears throat> uh, so Sonny were with us, he saw what progress Sonny had been making. Sonny were telling him, obviously, oh, it's really good in Sheffield, oh, I think I'm going to permanently move to Sheffield. We get on, <clears throat> it's a lovely city. All my new friends are up here. The gym, we, we all thrive off each other, there's no separation in the gym everybody gets on grant is 100 percent uh, which i knew charlie before that anyway but never did no coaching with him uh, so he come up and then he wanted to start training after a few years up here himself charlie and i didn't have time because i was working full time <clears throat> got all the amateurs we got a good amateur set up then winning national titles quite a few national titles each year uh, i'd got sunny and I says, I just can't devote the time to you. And I'm not one of these coaches that just takes boxers for sacred, or even if they're a good, a good fighter like that. If I can't give them the time, what they deserve, I'm not going to do it. So I says, look, I can't do it. <clears throat> so he says, yeah, thanks for your honesty. I went away uh, 18 months, two years later, come back again. He says, look, I really want to come in here. I see what you're doing with my brother. So I says, well, if you're that persistent I says come up have a look so he had a couple of weeks and he's like no nah, I really need to train with your grand he says I don't want to go anywhere else I don't know what I'm going to do with so he put me on the spot a bit so I was like you know what come on then let's get a crack give me 100% which I know you will I'll give you 100% tell him how it were and then it just took off from there and with Sean then I think we I think it was in about six weeks he got his first fight with me and I'm like this is a bit too quick, this six, eight, eight, he's only been here two minutes, he's not really settled in, he's settling in. So I thought I'd better start working on what we need, to, I think what I saw I thought he needed to work on. And we started working on it and then he understood why when I told him. And then obviously he got the Nelson victory and it was a really great performance. And that showed him then I think what we were doing in gym that it were paying off for him. And then he's just gone from strength to strength after that. <clears throat> Charlie's somebody throughout his career who has always shown great technical ability. I think the biggest change, or certainly the perception of the biggest change in Charlie in the last year or so, or certainly around the same sort of time you've been working together, has been his, the change in his mentality and how he's approached the sport, which is, I think, what we really saw in the Rosales fight when he won the world title. Would you agree with that? Yeah, uh, Charlie, he, he always used to doubt himself. He was a very, very good talent. And when he first come, I says, look, you've got all the ability in the world, don't doubt yourself. You're always striving to be better and better and better. Told you that, didn't That's I? Right. <laughs> uh, you were always striving to get better, better, better. 
and he were always trying to be one step ahead of himself and I says look that's not how it works <laughs> so I've just been in, every time I go into gyms recently whether it's yours or McGuigan's gym we always have a a little dog visitor, which is fine. Oh, we've got a dog family, <laughs> us. We've got dogs galore, us. We've got that many dogs coming out of us. That's, Dalton takes his dogs all over him, <laughs> as you can see. So, we'll just do a little, there we go. They'll still see <laughs> <laughs> So, you were saying, um, yeah, you were saying about Charlie's, Charlie used to be, and I know this from knowing Charlie personally, somebody who is, can often doubt himself, and it's, uh, I think, Boxing overall is a very lonely sport, and I think you wouldn't quite be normal if you didn't have those doubts. Just explain, as we were talking about, the, the changes that, have, that Charlie's made to his mental side of his game. Uh, what we got him doing is, is believing in himself, which he always believed in himself, but he were always striving, to, like I said, to be, to be better. He, he weren't doubting himself, he were doubting that he could be better. That was the situation. And I says, no, you are a good fighter, but a fighter will always improve no matter what. You're never the finished article. I said, so just forget about it all. Just do as you're told. Don't overthink things. Don't try too hard. Just earn your rewards. Don't chase your rewards. They'll come to you. Just be patient. And so that mentality we drove into and then we drove it into the ring with his boxing. Earn the good work. Don't drive for the good work and you'll get the good work. And we just started setting certain things for him, slowing him down, saying, look, you're going to see this, you'll see this a bit. And he's, he's like, yeah, I don't have to be 100 mile an hour. I don't have to be, I've got to be the best in the world. I, I've got to be better at this. I've got to be All them things will come, won't they? I says, this is what you'll do. I says, you watch. When he first come, I says, you watch in 18 months, 12, 18 months, you'll be a totally different fighter. You play your fights back then, play them back then. You will be, if you do as you're told, you will be a totally different fighter. How is having a world champion? I mean, I know that you've, you've certainly achieved, or your fighters have achieved an awful lot, namely your son, who we just saw with his lovely dog, um, as an amateur. How has it been different being kind of thrust into the limelight? I know you've worked with Sonny for numerous years and throughout his professional career, but you've now got a WBC world champion. That's different to, with the greatest of respect to amateur boxing, it's obviously, it's completely different. Has that changed you at all? Have you had to, yeah, has that changed you at all? Uh, not really. No. Not, necessarily, not necessarily having the world champion, but being, I guess, probably a more professional boxing-oriented coach is probably the... the it's become more of a business. Yeah. It, as everybody knows, professional boxing is a business. Mm. So, now nah, my fighters are, getting, uh, are at that level with Charlie, and then you've got your Sonny Edwards in far off, Lee McGregor and Dalton and Kyle Hughes. They're all getting up there, so it's become a business. So you do have to look out for each fighter separate. And I know it's business. That's it. Amateur boxing is totally different. And to me, it's two different sports. Totally two different sports. What they do in the ring is totally different. How you train them is different. So what has affected me more, obviously, we had a very good amateur setup here, which we still have. Uh, but I fetched Ian Baines on, another guy. He's head coach of the amateurs now with Pierce Goodgin. Uh, one of my old fighters as well, uh, and they took the, the full range of the amateurs, because obviously while I'm away with my fight with the professionals, I couldn't spend the time with the amateurs what I were putting in, because they were tra they were trained like professionals. They used to train two, three, two and three times a day when if they got tournaments coming up, and obviously I can't do that while I'm away. So I fetched them in, which Pierce has always been with me anyway, because he boxed for us and then he's gone through his coach for years now. So they've took full reins of the amateurs. I'm still a registered amateur coach. I get when I can to the shows to help them out. I don't take control. Bainsey and Pierce take control in the corner work. I just pass up for them. I'll help them in the gym if I can. And that's how I work. And I've just gone to, to be full-time in day. No, no work. I'm just full-time boxing coach. We've mentioned Dalton, um, the most successful amateur boxer from Sheffield. First of all, how is it coaching your son? I mean, it's not the same thing at all, but when I, I used to play football at a relatively good level, my dad was my coach and I absolutely hated it. And I'm sure he probably didn't enjoy it either from kind of looking back. What's the dynamic like? How is the dynamic different? Is it different at all between yourself and Dalton since you've kind of 
I've actually asked him this question. I won't tell you the answer because I want to know your answer. But what's the dynamic like when it's father and son as well as fighter and trainer? Uh, fighter and trainer, believe it or not, is easier than father, son, trainer. It's, it's so hot. It's so, it is hard, don't get me wrong, because he doesn't train no different to others. He does the tr same sessions, he does the same stuff in his sessions as he does, he doesn't get no favouritism. If not, he, get, he gets it a bit harder. He bet, gets it harder, because I know I can deal with him. Uh, we still have his little tiffs, because it's like, oh, it's my dad, he's pushing me to on. But it's in, I push all my fighters hard, uh, and now he's turned professional. He has admitted, Dad, it's easier. It's a lot easier now I'm professional. He says, the making way, everything, the structure of the training, it's totally different. I'm, I, it's a lot easier and I'm a lot happier and we don't argue as much. We still have as tiffs, but... <laughs> what was it like for you? I mean, we've spoken, I've spoken to Dalton about this and I know Dalton has spoken to a lot of other people about him being deflated at not initially not being able to go to the Olympics. It had been his dream for a number of years, as I'm sure it was for you. Was that difficult for you? I mean, particularly under the circumstances of, of what happened. I mean, they took out the weight classes. That meant that he couldn't go to the Olympics. Was that disappointing for you, having invested so much time in, in Dalton's amateur career? It weren't disappointing for me. I was disappointed for him. That's why I was disappointed. I were, I'm never disappointed for myself for what happens with Dalton's career because it's in Dalton's hands. That's, that's his destiny. What will be, will be. I just give as much input as I can. So I won't be devastated on my own behalf. If I were devastated, I'm devastated for Dalton as my son and my boxer. Uh, I was very unhappy for it because that's his, been his childhood dream since he was five. He wanted to be represent his country at Olympic Games. So to come that far and that close and that to happen, and then it was like, it, it was hard for me seeing him as if it were getting demoralised. It kept getting dangled, took away, get dangled, took away. And I was like, you know what? And I could see he weren't happy. He had his fair share of injuries, his hand injuries, and he was said, Dad, I, I wish I could just bandage my hands like they do in America in amateur tournaments. And we just can't do it. And he was having to take his time through tournaments. His, his, all his, his hands were getting damaged in the first fight or every tournament. The last tournament he won gold, the last tournament he boxed and he won gold. And boxed some Ukrainians, all the top kids. He, he bust his hand in the first fight. He had to have three more fights with a bust hand. And he had to get through it, which he did. Obviously, he won gold. But to see that happening to him, and then for it to get to car, and he come up to me and he's like, Christmas time, he's like, Dad, what do you think we should do? Do you think it would be a good idea to turn no, this? Is, my weight's getting to car. I can't make the lower weight. Obviously, I can't go up to the heavier weight. I'm not going to make the weight every day, weighing in every day at the tournaments. My hands are getting smashed. It could ruin my professional career after the Olympics with my hands and whatever. He says, look, son, whatever you want to do, I'll stand by you, whatever. But, yeah, I don't want to make the lower weight, which you can't do it. It's just going to ruin your career because you're not going to perform and you're going to look, have stinkers. I said, you can't go to the heavier weight. So... We'll make the moves to turn professional, if that's what you want. So, as long as you generally want that 100%, I said, the, the Olympics have gone anyway now, nah, we can't change that. So, what's point in waiting another year to try to get to the Olympics, a year, a year and a half, another 18 months, if you know you're not going to perform and not get there because you can't make the weight? I said, so, we'll turn over. It were devastated, but obviously we, we sought the right advice and... Everything's happened for a reason, and now he's on to his next journey in his life. I've spoken to Dalton about how he feels his transition has gone from amateur to professional, particularly when you consider how decorated an amateur he was. This is something that we saw recently with Rubisa Ramirez, who's a double Olympic gold medalist. Often it can be the case of the more established you are as an amateur, the more difficult it can be to turn over. How have you found his transition? Uh, He's always trained with professionals anyway, really, in our gym anyway. So <clears throat> we've had to make a lot of changes, don't get me wrong. We've had to make a lot of changes, but we're just slowing things down. We're not trying to be world beaters straight away. He's 22 years old. 
he's a baby compared to a lot of other Olympians and a lot of other maximum fighters and other Olympians and GB lot who have turned over. They, they've probably got four or five years on him. I says, you're not going to be in your peak for another five years. I says, so we'll just take your time. We'll get you quite a few fights in, as long as they're the right fights at the right time and the learning fights. And then as long as you're, there's no reason why he can't reach top. So he's slowed everything down. He knows where he's going. He knows everybody who's on his side's looking after his best interests. And we just take it slowly, slowly. What weight do you think he'll end up at? I know we had a, a brief chat during... Um fight week for White Rivas and we had a little laugh and a joke because he said that he could potentially move down in weight again. Um, where do you think he'll eventually settle? As you mentioned, he's very young, um, still finding his feet as a professional. Where do you think he'll end up in weight-wise? Uh, he did want to turn over at lightweight. So I said, he said, I can do lightweight, Dad. Yeah, day before weighing, no problem. Well, obviously we're a problem, obviously, and weight's never easy. He says, but I'll do lightweight, Dad. And I didn't want him to. I says, no, most people would say, yeah, get down. I says, no, we're looking at your career as a long ev longevity of your career. I says, what we'll do, we'll do super lightweight, you'll make that nice. I says, three or four years down the line, obviously, when you two, three years, when your titles start coming in a couple of years, a year or so, whatever, as long as it takes. It says, your titles will become, you'll have grown into weight, you'll be really, a, he's already strong for weight, but you'll be even stronger, you'll be good at the weight. I says, and then otherwise, if you do it a lightweight, you're going to grow out of the weight. You see that many fighters grow out of the, by the time they come to title contention, they're struggling and you don't see the best of them. I says, so let's see best that you're at this weight, we'll grow into the weight. And I'm hoping you can hold this for another three or four year and then probably move up to welter. With that being said, we'll let you go and get back off and run off and do your work. Uh, Grant Smith, real pleasure speaking to you. Thanks Thank very you much for speaking always. to Boxing Social. Um, and I will catch you before August the 31st. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you, Ron. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. That was great. Nice one. Thank you.